back to another video and with the release of the new iPhone 15 series whether that be the regular 15 or the 15 Pro and Max I thought it was about time we talk about what iPhones to get all right now we're going to talk specifically about the newer iPhones all right some of us are okay buying the older iPhones, but this specific video is what iPhones to get if you're going to be looking at the newer iPhones, okay? And as I always do with these discussion based slash uh, specs based slash comparison based videos, I will link up coverage from my favorite YouTube content creators down below. So if you're looking for a one stop shop, to know what you need to know about the new newest iPhones and get the latest recommendations along with seeing extended coverage then you have reached the right video because we're going to cover all of that and I'm going to link up some stuff for y'all to check out also now we're not going to talk about Apple's new wearables we're not going to talk about Apple's new earbuds we're just going to talk about the phone um, why we're not talking about the wearables or the earbuds, they're basically the same, alright? The only changes that you have with Apple's new wearables, whether it be the Ultra 2 or the S9, okay, is the system on the chip or the SIP, that's the only major change, and then boost, it, boost to overall brightness. Your S9 goes up to 2,000 nits brightness and your um, your Ultra 2 goes up to 3,000 nits brightness. Other than that, the only major changes was the system on the chip, which gives them um, improvements in dictation and faster responsiveness when you're pulling up certain things on your watch. That's it. We basically covered that in a minute and a half. Alright? And basically, with the new he headphones or earbuds or AirPods, they just added a USB Type-C port. So now you can charge basically all of your Apple products with USB Type-C. And I have to just say this, okay? Kudos to the European Union for basically making Apple convert everything to USB Type-C. I'm not giving Apple kudos for something they should have did years ago. I never understood why your iPad has USB Type-C, your your MacBook has USB Type-C, your um your um the iMac itself or the Mini Mac has USB Type-C, but your your phones never had USB Type-C and your AirPods never had USB Type-C. Never understood it. So thank you, European Union. Because now, everything has USB Type-C. And now, I can officially say, one cable to rule them all, USB Type-C, all the things. Thank you. So, but today, I'm getting off topic. Let's talk about the new iPhones, right? And essentially, I'm just going to focus on the newer iPhones that are going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of overall battery life with solid cameras. Now we're not gonna talk about the Pro iPhones because in all honesty, the Pro iPhones are made for professionals, right? So maybe you're a videographer, maybe you're a photographer, maybe you create content, then you're looking at the Pro iPhones. But if you're an average consumer, much like myself, I do make YouTube videos, but I consider myself an average consumer first. From an average consumer standpoint, we just want, or at least I just want, super solid cameras with super solid battery life. And I want to make sure I'm getting my security patches and updates. And the three iPhones that we're going to talk about here today deliver all of that in space. So which three iPhones are we going to talk about here today? We're going to be talking about the 13 Pro Max, the old school slash reigning battery king, alright? 
and pretty much all of the features that you're gonna get on your newer iPhones in terms of software, you will get on your 13 Pro Max. And you can actually get the 13 Pro Max for a really great price. Then we're gonna talk about the older but still really solid uh, 14 Plus, and then the newer 15 Plus, all right? And basically, let me tell y'all what changed first, all right? So basically, when you're going from your 14 to your 15, everything from the uh, 14 Pro carry down to your 15. So now, in your 15s, we have the Dynamic Island, that little pill at the top, and we have the SOC from last year's Pro. So now we're rocking the A16 Bionic. So the last year Pro chip is now in your newer baseline iPhones. If you want the this year Pro chip, you're going to have to go up to the Pro phones to get the 17 Pro. All right? But you're basically getting all the Pro specs and features from last year's Pro iPhone in this year's base iPhones, right? And it's starting at 128 gigs of storage, and they all have 6 gigs of RAM. Now, if you bump up to the Pro iPhones this year, you're only getting that storage bump if you go with the Pro Max. The Pro Max starts at 256 but it also has a starting price of $1,200. $1,199.99, $1,200. So, to me, I feel as though the 14 Plus and the 15 Plus, along with the 13 Pro Max, if you're looking at modern iPhones, if you can afford these modern iPhones, if you don't want something a little bit older, these are the way to go, all right? And in particular, I would actually recommend you get the international models because then you still have your physical SIM. If you're in the States like I am, you're only going to get your physical SIM with the 13 Pro Max. If you go with the 14 Plus or the 15 Plus, they're still sticking with the eSIM. So you're going to have to do that eSIM activation or that eSIM transfer. And once again, I heard that there's a lot of issues going on with the eSIM activation this year. And there's also a lot of issues going on with the uh, activation and transfer of the data from your older iPhones to your newer ones. All right, so once again, if you do get newer iPhones, you may run into some technical issues, so just have some patience. But essentially, that's pretty much it, y'all. I mean, then we have the basic stuff here. We got the bumping cameras. So basically, you got the newer main camera um, and the newer ultra-wide camera from your pros, you don't have your uh, telephoto or zoom camera, not on your baseline, but you're getting the newer cameras from the pros down in the baseline uh, 15, okay? So if we go to the cameras here, you can see we're getting that new 48 megapixel camera for the main, and then we still have the uh, upgraded 12 megapixel camera for the ultra wide, and that's a big bump over the 12 that they decided to go with from last year and the 12 ultra wide right but you can still record all of the same stuff so you still have 1080p uh uh 1080p up to uh 240 frames per second you got 4k up to 60 frames per second with your front and your rear facing cameras right still got all that good stuff in terms of the cameras right but you're getting the new um, 48 megapixel primary camera on your baseline iPhones this year, right? Now, if you wanted the new uh, telephoto 5 megapixel camera, you will have to go with the Pro Max. And in all honesty, based on what I've seen from the videos, it's good, but it's really only good if you stick to the lower zoom. 
like anything between five and seven time zoom is gonna look really good I'm gonna link up some videos down below but anything after that the digital cropping which which is essentially what happens it doesn't look so hot but if you're not big on zoom then you don't really have to worry about that and you can stick with one of the lower iPhones but you're still gonna be really really good okay but yeah, you basically have the newer uh, Bluetooth in here. You got the newer Wi-Fi in here, right? And you got the wireless charging. Um, you do have reverse charging this year, but it's with the wire because you have USB Type-C on your newer iPhones. You can reverse charge other devices, whether that be your new AirPods, whether that be another phone and it doesn't necessarily have to be another iPhone because now you can charge other phones like Android phones that also have USB type C and this is why it's such a great thing now that all modern smartphones moving forward will have USB type C so you can charge multiple different things and transfer data a lot faster now the difference between the baseline iPhones and the the Pro Max iPhone, right? Because you can only really get this feature to work flawlessly with your Pro Max iPhone this year is if you have your Pro Max iPhone, you can do USB recording out in ProRes, all right, to an external hard drive. So you can you can record your footage directly to an external hard drive. And then take that external hard drive's recorded footage and drop it straight into a video editor and then go into editing your footage right so that is an awesome um, addition this year but that basically just focuses on content creators and that also means that you have video out and display out with your pro iPhone this year so if you wanted to set up your video and have a live uh, preview before you start recording, now you can output your iPhone's Pro video to an external display. This way you have a live feed of what your video looks like before you push record. Again, this is only really available and useful on the Pro Max series iPhone this year because although you can do it on the regular 15 Pro, it does take up a lot of processing power and based on the videos that I've seen when you use it for extended periods of time it does throttle the phone heavily but you have less throttling on your Pro Max series when you use that feature so I would only honestly recommend using this feature if you're using the Pro Max this year and I, honestly if you're a content creator you only really need to be getting the Pro Max. The Pro Max should serve you well for a long time to come, especially with those additional ProRes and display out and um, recording out features that they now offer with the new USB Type-C port. And then also with your Pro Max this year, you also get the higher data transfer speed. It's USB 3.0 um, USB-C 3.0 with your Pro Max this year, okay? It's slower USB-C 2.0 with all the other models, right? But essentially, that should only matter to you if you are a content creator. Because essentially, if you want the bigger display, which is basically the same size as your Pro Max, you really should be looking at the 15 Plus, okay? But other than that, all your good stuff is here, right? You got your big beautiful display you got your high refresh rate you still have your Apple pay with NFC you got the upgraded cameras right you got the wireless charging you got the USB type-c port you got the upgraded Wi-Fi right and you have the emergency SOS and satellite SOS and MMS features built in this year just like they were on the pro iPhones last year built into your 15 plus all right and you also have that on your 14 plus as well and this guys and gals is 
why I say if you're looking at a modern iPhone basically anything 13 and up and you know you're not gonna take advantage of the um, pro features from the pro or the pro max so basically the content creation features you don't really need to be spending that type of money on that now next year no not even next year because you can just rock with your 15 plus for a good three to four years to come and be good to go and the really cool thing about the uh the 15 plus is it actually has the biggest battery out of the entire lineup all right so it actually and i've seen some battery comparison videos and man shout out to jay williams because he he was right the 14 plus actually ended up being one of the best iphones last year and it looks like the 15 plus is going to end up being one of the best iphones for this year in terms of overall package and in terms of overall battery life and you can see it in terms of um battery life the 15 plus actually has the biggest battery out of the entire iPhone lineup this year. So if you want the best overall package, in my opinion, I would recommend you guys and girls go with the 15 Plus. Or you can go with the 13 Pro Max or the 14 Plus. Alright? Alright, but now let's take a look at pricing, right? And in particular, let's start off with pricing for the 13 Pro Max because if we jump over to Apple's website you can only go as low as the regular 13 or the newer iPhone SE. You can no longer get the 13 Pro Maxes officially from Apple's website. Okay? But we're going to go over Apple's pricing for the new phones in a second here but I just wanted to show y'all that. But let's jump over to swap up. And let's look at the pricing on this 13 Pro Max, right? So you can see prices starting as low as $515. Let's click into this, all right? Let's see what we're working with here. So you can filter some of your options here, and, and I always do. I always go with the unlocked. I don't really care about the colors. And then I always try to go with the most storage that I think I'm gonna need because, you know, iPhones, don't have expandable storage so I'm gonna go 128 gigabytes um, let's see it really doesn't matter the uh, model here because we're going with the unlocked versions condition I like to go with either new or mint right new is probably gonna save you a little bit more money right but let's go with um, let's go with mint Mint is probably gonna be a little bit more expensive yeah oh so this is what I usually do on Swapper here. So here's what we have in terms of the storage and in terms of being basically globally unlocked. So it's gonna be as low as 750 for a mint condition Pro Max and that's gonna be in Sierra Blue, right? And that's actually a really great price, all right? Now, you can get better deals if you want it locked to a specific carrier, and if you're looking for a specific color, you can get better deals, but for me, I always recommend going globally unlocked, and then just getting the most storage you think you're going to need. So, of course, if I was picking up a Pro Max, a 13 Pro Max, that's what I would rock with, probably the Sierra Blue. 128 gigabytes mint condition and you can see this this, this particular seller has a five star rating with 2234 reviews and he's coming out of New York so I'm cool with that because if y'all don't know originally I'm from Queens New York originally so I'm okay with buying things from New York especially um, if I really needed to, I can contact family members back home and just, just be like, yo, can you go pick that up for me? 
and then have my family member ship it to me this way I know I'm guaranteed to get it so I don't necessarily have to have it shipped from New York from an unknown source I could just be like hey yo um, can you go pick it up for me I already paid for it and they go pick it up and then they can ship it to me but honestly I'm okay with um getting things shipped from New York because I'm from New York so I know how that works but yeah that's a really good price for your 13 Pro Max alright but even still let's check out uh 13 a uh, 14 plus so let's back up and let's back up again alright and let's back up one more time I didn't realize how far I came in here clicking through the options alright so that was your 13 Pro Max. Now let's look at your 14 Plus. Look at this, look at this. Starting as low as $473 for the unlocked version. Let's click in here and see what we're working with. And then even still, a 14 Pro Max unlocked starting as low as $721. But I've seen some videos and the 14 Pro Max does not have the best battery life. Uh, the 14 Plus actually still has the more supreme battery life in my opinion. And it's stated that the new iOS update is kind of crunching the battery life. So, and I said this before in a lot of my iOS videos, if your iPhone is running flawlessly, you don't have to update it, all right ideally you really have to update your iPhone so software like once every six months um, but if your iPhone is running flawlessly you don't have to update it, right so let's check out these 14 so here we go unlocked y'all know I rock with the unlocked um, colors I don't really care storage we're gonna go with 128 and then here we go so the lowest um oh, oh 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 let's go to condition as well you know i gotta have my my good condition it's gonna be 638 and then my mint condition yeah good condition 638 mint condition is going to be 762 so a little bit higher than your 13 Pro Max so at this price and structure I would actually go with a 13 Pro Max over a 14 plus but that's still a really good price and honestly at this price you can actually go with a 14 plus over a 15 plus right but that's really great pricing there and now let's go and take a look at I wonder do they have 15s for sale on here it's probably going to be the same price as what you can get from Apple so let's check that out 14 let me back up back up alright so yeah we do have 15s on here but yeah they're basically still running for the same price you do have a regular 15 that goes as low as just under what Apple's selling it for, but basically just, these are going for the same price that you would basically get from Apple. So I would actually wait on that. But let's see what Apple is selling these for. So let's look at the 15s here. Okay. All right. So let's go, Apple. What are we talking about? So you got your multiple different colors. They're giving you the feature breakdown, new this year, your dynamic island, basically everything that uh, was on your pro series last year is now on your base series this year. So you got your different colors, dynamic island features. Okay, let's let's just go straight to the phone. Y'all know how that works. So let's just click buy, and this will take us straight to the phone. All right, so. For your 15 and 15 plus, it's starting at $800 for your 15, which is a 6.1 inch screen. And that has a monthly 
payment on it of $33.29 a month for 24 months or $800 outright and that's going to give you a minimum storage of 128 gigs or you can go up to your 15 plus which is a hundred dollars more right so eight hundred dollars goes up to nine hundred dollars and if you're going to do it on monthly payments it's going to be about four dollars more so it goes from thirty three dollars monthly for 24 months up to thirty seven dollars monthly <clears throat> all right and ideally i would be looking at the 15 plus so we'll just click on that and here are all your colors so blue pink yellow green and black and honestly because of how apple did their color schemes this year i would honestly i wouldn't mind going with the blue or going with the black okay um seeing the unboxing of the colors that green huh that pink Huh, that yellow, huh, but that blue, it can honestly pass for blue when the light hits it, or white, and that black, can't go wrong with black, so I would honestly go with the blue, alright, and then I'm okay with the, the 128 gigs, alright, because I've been using a 64 gig iPhone for almost two years, and it's just now getting full at the end of the two year lifespan. So I'm okay with 128 gigs. I'm pretty good with my storage management. But you can see it starts at 900 and it goes all the way up to 1200. So it basically goes up to the starting price for your 15 Pro Max. All right? And honestly, you get the amount of storage you think you're gonna need and you get the amount of storage you think you can afford. All right, and we should never buy things unless we can afford them. Okay, so this is what I would rock with a 15 plus in blue, 128 gigs, and that's what it would run me right there. Now, this doesn't include taxes. Okay, and then you see it can ask you a couple questions, and it will ask you your carrier, all that good stuff. And I would basically just go with the unlocked version. I probably wouldn't do a trade-in here because the trade-in value on my phone, they would at most give you um, $200 for it. So, no, that's not it. And then it tells you what's in the box. So, you're going to get your iPhone in your specific color and your new USB-C to C cable and your Apple stickers and your booklets. And it's going to tell you you're going to need to activate and transfer your eSIM. All right. So that's what Apple's rocking with for the 15 Plus and the regular 15s. Now, let's also take a look at the 15 Pro, which is basically 15 Pro Max as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then let's just click on the Buy Now to take us straight to the pricing. And here we go. So. Starting out with the 15 Pro, it's going to start out at $1,000, and that's going to give you your 6.1 inch display, but that's also going to upgrade you to the Apple A17 Pro, okay, or 17 Pro, they dropped the A this year, okay, but it's going to start at $1,000 or $41.62 a month for 24 months. Or you can go up to your 15 Pro Max, which is going to, again, start at $1,200 or basically $50 a month for 24 months. All right. And if this was me, and if I was picking up a Pro Max, it would only be for content creation purposes. So I would go with the Pro Max here. And honestly, I like that natural titanium. So I would have to go with that that natural titanium, that natural titanium is looking good. And it starts at 256. 256 should be more than what I need, in all honesty. Um, from the times when I had phones with 256 gigs of storage, I used it for more than a year, and I barely even came close to filling up that 256 gigs of storage. So 256 gigs for me 
should be more than enough. Again, I'm really good with my storage management, so that's not an issue. But again, if you're going to go with a Pro Max, you need to go with the storage you think you're going to need and the storage you think you can afford because there is no expandable storage, not on iPhone. Okay? But with the USB Type-C, it does make it extremely easy to offload your files now because you could just plug it into your PC and offload the files or plug in an external hard drive and offload the files. So again, this is what happens when you have USB Type-C. It makes things extremely easy. Okay? So that's what I would rock with right there. So $1,200 or $50 a month. And then again, it asks you the same question. So trade-in, I would probably do no um, because they're not going to give me the best trade-in value for my phone. And then this is what you would get in the box. Okay, so you get your iPhone and your cable and your Apple stickers and your quick start guide letting you know you need to activate your eSIM. Alright, so that's the pricing from Apple directly. That's the pricing from using a third party site. And that's the real quick um, specs breakdown and comparison for the older iPhones versus the newer ones and that is what I would recommend so again if you want to go with a modern iPhone because you know you don't want to you don't want to go with something older to save money but you want a little bit more modern iPhone go with the 13 Pro Max the 14 plus or the 15 plus right and you're still gonna have an enjoyable experience all right I hope everyone enjoyed this video I hope you guys and gals found it helpful. I hope everyone is staying safe out there. And I will catch everyone in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace.